Hey guys, welcome to my May 26 DVD update, where I talk about all the DVDs I've gotten over the last three weeks. The first film I got is one a lot of people kept telling me about, and I watched it, and I, I know it's been, it's been done for like three or four years. I didn't think it was the greatest thing out there. It's Fanboys. It's basically a film about this one, these group of these friends who were like these big Star Trek fans, and the one friend is diagnosed with cancer, and this is, and he's they only give him about six months to live, and the new Star Wars episode four, four is coming out. So this movie takes place, I think, in '99. I don't remember when they were coming out, but they had basically have this plan to, to you know go on a road trip to steal a print of the film from the Lucas Ranch. Ranch. So it's them on this road trip. The thing is. It has some decent cameos in it, like Kevin Smith is in it, William Shatner's in it. I don't know, it just really wasn't that funny. And I was like, I was sitting there most of the time like, it's just like when you watch something like this, it's supposed to be funny. And it just was so boring in some parts. And I guess if I was a really big Star Trek fan, I would have really liked it more. I mean, and the thing that was kind of funny about it too was it had a lot of... um Judd Apatow characters that were like reshoots that were put back in because from what I heard they were they didn't the Weinsteins didn't like the cancer idea so they wanted to reshoot the film and get rid of the entire cancer idea so it was just them going to the Skywalker Ranch to steal the print just for no reason at all just because they wanted to and when they did that they reshot a lot of scenes and they added a lot of scenes with the Judd Apatow crew like Seth Rogen and things like that it's okay, it's worth checking out, but it's not that funny. I didn't hate it though. The next one I got is a movie that I think was shot in like 2003, and it's just coming out now from Lionsgate Films, and it's ha High Hopes, and I, I believe it had a different title, but it's a movie with Cor Nemec and um, David Faschino, you know, Bud Bundy. And the reason I wanted to watch this was because both of them, David Faschino and um, Cor Nemec, were in that on that online show Starving, which is a very funny online show. It's hopefully, it was on Crackle.com, hopefully that does not get canceled and they do another season of it for online. And this is basically about these group of these these friends that really want to put together their own film and the one guy, Corey Nemec's character, is a struggling actor and they're trying everything they can to get this movie funded. They don't really know what they're doing. And then they get this idea to try and steal this government marijuana to sell it to make, you know, sell it, you know, use the money and then make a film. But the movie doesn't really go very far. It doesn't, like, a lot of it is sort of stalls and not, doesn't really, nothing really happens in it. It was, I did like it, though. It was kind of funny, but it's by no means a good film. It's, it's very funny, though. I, I mean, it's a definitely a shoots and giggles movie. The next one I got is an Adam Rifkin film, which I had not seen before. And I actually reviewed Adam Rifkin's film, Look, in the last update. Must, definitely a must-see film. This is a film that he did, I think, in 97 or 98, right before Detroit Rock City, I believe. And it's called Welcome to Hollywood, which is a sort of a mockumentary film. And it's about Adam Rifkin wanting to follow around this actor. like the, Basically, he wants to take, like follow an actor from the beginning of his career, who's like a nobody, to superstar him, like if he becomes an Academy Award winner. It's basically him following around this guy... It was all set up stuff, but the guy was like a terrible actor, and nothing was going well. He would go, he go to auditions and screw them up. Every time something looked like it was going to go well for him, it would go wrong. He would come on the sets and bother people. I don't know. I thought this was a pretty funny thing. It, I don't think it's that easy to find, though. It's out of print. I was able to order it from Amazon on those Z shops. I would definitely check this one out. And sorry if I don't go into too much detail on these. It's very late at night, but I really wanted to do this update. The next one, I got a bunch of titles sent from Troma. The first one is Lloyd Kaufman's new documentary, Direct Your Own Damn Movie, which is a follow-up to Make Your Own Damn Movie, which I've never seen that other set. But this one follows all the aspects of putting together a film, like pre-production, editing, you know all that. But it's basically all that. It has interviews throughout the documentary with numerous directors and actors. Um, I... I really liked it. I, the one thing I really liked in it, though, was it had these Lloyd Kaufman set visits when he would go to do um, cameos for films like Crank 2 and Endgame and Slither and a number of titles. I really liked that stuff. I think Lloyd Kaufman should put out a, a, just a DVD called, like, Lloyd Set Visitors or something because he's been on so many films doing so many cameos. And I would just watch a whole DVD 
you know, like four hours of him just on these sets because they're very interesting because he's getting all these stuff, the stuff you never see, like all the stuff in the trailers and, and the craft service tables, just stuff you don't normally see in normal behind the scenes documentaries. And the next one is a re-release of Paltry Geist, which is the two disc special edition. And I don't know if this version is going to be in in stores or it's coming to the site, I'm not sure. I know the old version was a three disc set, which I th believe was a exclusive to Best Buy or Amazon, one of the two. I'm not, I don't remember, but I've reviewed this on a couple updates ago, so if you want to check that out, you can look at that. But this is definitely a good, like a must see film. The next one is a film that I really like called The Last Horror Film, which just came out. Now, this, I really like this. Um, it's the Joe Spinell, who was in Maniac, and it's basically he becomes obsessed with this one woman, and he one like his biggest dream is to direct a film, so he goes to the Cannes Film Festival and follows around this woman and is filming her from far away and like he like he's getting all he's basically making his film without her even knowing it. At the same time, all these people are dying off at the festival, and it's kind of a mystery of who it is and who the killer is, and everyone's getting these notes like you've made your last horror film. I love this movie. It has also has great 80s music. Definitely check that one out. Now the next one, all I have to say about this movie is it's a million times better than Twilight. Light. Oh, yeah. I don't know if you can see. That's kind of weird. How did that happen? Well, it's Death by Temptation, a film by James Bond the Third, which is a death is a very cool vampire, urban vampire film, and this is the new traumatic piece, no trauma retro collection version. And yes, this is Samuel Jackson's first film, and I don't know how this quote ended up on this. I just said it and it ended up on this box. I guess it was magic. Now I got a whole bunch of Blu-ray titles from Paramount and some that were sent and a bunch that I bought. The first one is a movie that was in theaters, and I didn't want to see it in theaters because I knew that it was like slightly cut up, and I wanted to wait and see it on DVD. It's Liam Neeson in the film Taken, and I'm surprised how much I really like this movie. I mean, I, I don't normally like these kind of things, but I really like this one a lot. It's basically Liam Neeson, who was work for the government. You don't really know exactly what he did and what his main job was in the government, but his daughter, he goes to France. And she ends up, she's, he's talking to her on the phone in France, she ends up getting kidnapped. And he hears on the phone, and he's, he has all these special skills with tracking people down. And he, he's trying to find his daughter, so he goes to France, and it's him in, in France trying to find his daughter. It's kind of difficult to explain without ruining everything. But this is definitely something to check out, and I really like this. This one, though. I was really looking forward to this when I first heard about it. And I couldn't even get through it. I'm, I just shut it off. It was... It was like so shameful. I don't know. It was not. I mean, it, the picture quality was amazing. It was some of the sharpest, great, like best picture I'd ever seen. But you know, the picture you like you can't shine sheet. This was just not good. And it's the S Darko. And I watched it for about an hour, and it was like, you know, what? I can't watch any more of this. You know, the original Die Darko was a great film. And I remember like discovering it. And it was kind of a weird situation, the film. When I remember when it first came out, it came out like a week after after September 11th. So it did not do well. It was not a good time. Everyone was depressed. It was a terrible, you know, it was a terrible time. But when it came out, it didn't do well. And I remember then it came out to DVD not long after. And I remember finding it like at Borders and it was just on the shelf. And it was like when it first came out, nobody really knew about it when it came to DVD. Then it became like a big trend, like it was all at Hot Topic and everything. But the original was a great film. Um, this thing is trying really hard to, you know, to be the same thing, but it, it's not the same writer. It's the person who wrote this doesn't. I mean, you you can't. The first film had a very specific quality to it, and if you're not the right, the same writer, you don't know what he was trying to say with it. And this thing does not work. They they got the one sister to come back, and that's it. They wrote off everybody else from the film. I don't know. I would just avoid this thing. I mean, it's not good. The next one I got. And a lot of people dislike this movie, but it did really well at the box office. Much, I mean, it made amazing money. And this is the kind of thing that would come out that very much like a movie from like 1994 or something. It seemed almost like a set, like a script that was sitting around on the floor from like since 93 or 4, and it just f suddenly got made. And it's Paul Blart, Mall Cop, Kevin James. And I was never a huge Kevin James fan. I never watched the show he was on, at The King of Queens. 
I mean, I'm sure it was fine. I just never really watched it. But this is basically Kevin James as a like a cop at a mall and his goal he really wants to be a real police officer he can't because he's got this disorder this blood sugar thing so if he doesn't eat have something like some sweets every second he passes out and falls asleep but it's him when he's at the mall and like there is this break in and these these thugging criminals in the mall and it's him like crawling through the vents and trying to stop the criminals and that's pretty much the whole movie but I really did think this was funny it's pretty much a die hard spoof Looked very good on Blu-ray. I don't know. I would definitely check this out. I know a lot of people didn't like it. Like, I don't know. I just think it was a very funny movie. The next one I got is the Batman, the Blu-ray collection. Well, it's not the Blu-ray collection. They have the set of all four of the movies. And I already have the original DVDs of all those four films. The, the, the old DVD set of it. And I didn't want to have to like buy pay... 80 bucks and get the th third and fourth movie. I don't care for those very much. The third one's alright. I really would just want the first and second movie. So I bought the standalone Batman. And hopefully at some point Batman Returns standalone comes out. Because if, if not, it's going to be pretty upsetting. This looked amazing on, on Blu-ray. I read some reviews people saying it didn't look so good. It didn't look that much better. I thought it looked great. And the thing, you know, a lot of people have this thing about like the new Dark Knight and those are the best Batmans. The thing with the new Dark Knight is the Joker was amazing. You know, Heath Ledger was did it had an amazing performance in that. And it really was a good film. The problem with it was Christian Bale. Like that Batman voice was not very good. And it it just was not the greatest movie. You know, and it's kind of the kind of movie too where you kinda of get conned into thinking it's the greatest movie. Because everyone talks about it so much and like, oh it's the greatest thing ever. And, you know, if you say it so much, everyone starts to believe it and just starts saying it. And don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with it. But, you know, when I think Batman, I think of this. Maybe it's because I grew up with these. Maybe it's I saw it in theaters when I was a kid and it was a big thing. And, you know, I just don't feel like the new ones have the same... I don't know, they're just not the same. The next one, DVD I got, is a complete second season of Dexter, the Blu-ray. And... I didn't have not seen the newest season, the third season of this. Hopefully, when it comes to Blu-ray, I'm going to catch up with it. But this is basically about a serial killer that only kills bad people. So he, like, he kills off, he basically follows around people who are the criminals and then kills them off. And it's Michael C. Hall, who I absolutely thought was amazing in um, Six Feet Under, which is one of those kind of shows, though, where you don't want to watch it again, because like almost like when you watch it, you felt like you lived it, and you like it was so depressing at the end. Like I remember when I watched that last episode of that show, like even everybody in my house, my mom, dad, bro, everybody, was a depressed mess for at least a week. But this show is basically, he's the serial killer, killing the bad people. I don't know, I like this show. Definitely worth, che worth checking them out, though. The next one, like this, the cover kind of ruined this movie. Like the, it, it already sort of like ruins like the twist. I'm not gonna say the twist to this though. It's basically it's called Passengers, which stars Anne Hathaway and Patrick Wilson. It's about this group of these people who are in a plane crash, and it's about Anne Hathaway as they, she's basically I guess she's like a psychiatrist or something talking to the, you know the remaining victims who lived through the crash. And it's her like having meetings with them, and you start. I don't want to ruin it. I did, or I did really like this movie. And at the end, I had like a, a crying fit to it. I was happy to see though Cleo Duvall in this, who was in But I'm a Cheerleader and, and a lot of really good films that I like. Um, she was. Did, this was definitely a pretty big movie for her. Definitely check this out. The next one. This movie kind of fooled me. I, th I thought this movie, when I was watching it, and even when I saw the trailer, was actually shot in, like, Ireland or, like, somewhere in Europe. And it's called Plague Town. And it was shot in New Haven, Connecticut. It was freaked me out. It was, it was shot where I, where I did the movie Sasquatch Assault. It was really weird. It was, like, it's basically about these group of these American tourists who are in a foreign country. And it's these, there's these weird, like, kids that are killing everybody off. And they're very cool makeup on them. But this movie really fools you. And, you, I mean, when you watch this, you're not going to think this was shot in America. But, I mean, I don't know. I really did like this thing, though. But it's these, this group of these family trying to, like, survive from these things. and It's very creepy, though. Very well done. It's from Dark Sky Films, which I don't think anyone even knew this thing came out. Because it didn't... I don't think these Dark Sky Films get in many stores or anything. Pretty much you have to get them online. And... At least it looked very good on Blu-ray, though. There was there was a few problems I had with the film, like 
I mean, there was a few scenes in the beginning, the way it was shot, it had like some strange cutting, but it was a pretty cool movie. But it, when you watch this, though, if anyone else has seen this, like, let me know if you were fooled at first thinking that it was shot in, like, in Europe. The next one I got is Without a Paddle. So it's basically, I haven't watched this thing in a while. I didn't even get to look at it again. But it's Seth Green, Matthew Lillard, and Dax Shepard, who were, for a while, like, you know, big new, like, they all still are, but they don't get talked about as much. Seth Green does, but Matthew Lillard and Dax Shepard, like, I haven't, I don't hear much about Dax Shepard at all anymore. But he was, like, really big at a point in time. And this is basically about these group of these friends that used to always go out on, like, adventures and they want to go back out and have one big adventure again out in the woods and it's all these problems that happen to them out there. I, I really like this. They made the sequel to it which I talked about which is a very strange sequel and it like they didn't get anybody back and it wasn't the greatest. It was really low budget but I did like it though. And the next ones I got are Wayne's World and Wayne's World 2. I never cared much for Wayne's World 2. It was alright. Wayne's World 1, though, was about these group of these guys, these two guys, Wayne and Garth, who broadcast this comedy show from their basement on public access TV. I always really liked this movie a lot. And then they, they get seen by this producer, and they get a major show on TV, but it doesn't go well, and there's all these issues with it. Very good movie. The second one, though, was they were trying to put on this rock concert, and it just, it just was not the same. Next one I got is Changing Lanes, which is a Ben Affleck, Samuel Jackson movie. And I, I haven't gotten to watch this one over again. Because um, I got sent so many... I have a whole bunch of other ones that I haven't even gotten to talk... I, I'm going to save for the next update, like the Star Trek set, which I really want to talk about. I want to watch them all before I talk about them. Because I've never seen any of them. But this is basically... I always remember this was like promoted so much when, like, when it was first coming out, like crazy. I saw everything about this. I don't remember if it did too well in theaters. I, I believe I saw it in theaters and liked it, though. It was basically Samuel Jackson and Ben Affleck get into this car accident. And I think he... I think that's what it was. And I believe he gets away and then he chases him down. It's like a big ordeal. He gets and the next one I got is, the, from the, is from the Criterion Collection, the director's approved version of The Curious Case of Benjamin Button, which, which stars Brad Pitt and... Um, it's basically about a character who's born old, and throughout, and it goes through his life when he's born old and he gets younger throughout the movie. So basically, he gets younger and younger and younger. And it's basically all the people he meets and like the events of his life in, into a film. It's not a true story, though. <laughs> but um, I really like this a lot. And I've talked about it before in, like with MJ in one of the Around the Towns. It just looked very good on Blu-ray. And it was very interesting, the behind-the-scenes stuff on this. Because I didn't even realize how some of that stuff was done in the beginning with the old... When he was super old in the wheelchair. For some reason, I thought there was just Brad Pitt there doing it with makeup. It was actually this this guy sitting in for him, this unique-looking guy. And he was just wearing, like, this green on his face, or there was green around his face, and they dropped Brad Pitt's face in. So it's Brad Pitt just sitting in a chair like this. And they would put the face over this. But it was interesting to watch, because I didn't figure all that out with that. And the next one, the last title, is Chris, the Chris Farley David Spade film Black Sheep, which was their film, which was a follow-up to Tommy Boy. It's not a sequel. It's very similar, though. Chris Farley is a governor's brother, and he wants to help his brother out by, like, you know, spreading around flyers and helping his brother get elected. So it's them going around Washington State, not Washington, D.C., Washington State, Washington, Seattle, going around. And the thing with this movie was, even when I first saw it years ago, I never thought it was as funny as Tommy Boy. I always liked it, but it was never as good as Tommy Boy. Tommy Boy, you couldn't get much better than that with Farley and Spade. That was their best movie, I thought. They only did two or th they did two things together, but they were in like more like three or four other things together. But um, it's basically them trying to get into all and they get into all these issues and are hiding out. And I would always mix this up with my fellow Americans for some reason, because like there was this, there was very similar scenes in that when they hid out in a cabin. And for some reason, I always would mix them up. I don't know why, but um, those were all the Blu-rays and DVDs I got over the last three weeks. And sorry if I didn't get into full detail with some of them. Like I said, it's about 3 a.m., but I really wanted to get to this. And the next update, I'm going to talk about the Star Trek 
um, complete set, and a number of other titles like The Machinist and some of the other ones I haven't gotten to watch yet. So I want I really want to wait till I get to watch them so I can discuss them better. Anyway, though, thanks a lot for everyone for watching for subscribing, and I'll see you in about two weeks.